Welcome in, Tucker Gang Sports Show. I'm your host, Cole Tucker. Uh, you know, looking forward, we got our first episode today with uh, Gerald Riggs Jr., Tennessee Vol legend, uh, NFL tailback, owner of BCU University, um, trains kids, but we're really excited about it. We're gonna dive into uh, the SEC, college football, uh, sports in general, you know, season pending, you know, what season we're in, uh, obviously we'll be big on the SEC and as a Tennessee fan obviously we'll, we'll, we'll investigate on Tennessee side quite a bit uh, you know first episode we're definitely going to dive in Tennessee football um, state of the program but the overall view of the show um, you know we're going to talk with athletes name brand athletes that we can get to bring people get people's attention so we can kind of talk about what they have going on in their communities and what they're doing to help better the youth in their areas and kind of a little bit about what I'm trying to help out with them doing in our show. Uh, big shout out to our sponsors, uh, Moss Motor Company, um, auto dealership in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee. You need a car, come by and see us. We are the best in customer service. Jay Sullivan, my IT partner, editor, uh, big shout out to him. Couldn't do this without him. Uh, does a great job with anything to do with electronics because I'm completely lost. But that's another story for another day. Um, another couple sponsors. Uh, Junior Varsity Golf Channel on YouTube. Hit like, subscribe, go check it out. We've got some great content on there. And Jay Sullivan uh, Golf Channel on YouTube. Go check it out, like it. Uh, big time push. We've got a big partnership going on with some guys and we're looking to take this thing to some pretty incredible heights. Um, like I said, you know, uh, this is an opening for the first episode, but I like to include this. When people say they can't do something, I've been planning this for six months to put together a show like this, but literally I didn't have a start date. But 48 hours ago I said, let's do this. And I got a name brand, SEC guy, great person in the community, and there's so much more in store. Huge announcements coming very soon this coming week. Early in the week, look for a huge announcement. Big live show going on uh, in Knoxville at the uh, Tennessee-Georgia game on campus this weekend. And then, uh, We'll have some clips from a Friday night event that we're hopefully be in and uh, get some good footage with some big time guys. But uh, next up, Gerald Riggs, episode one. Hope you love us, Tucker. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your time in Knoxville, man. What's going? What's up with that? Uh, just you know, it was obviously you know everything you would expect. Um, you know, it was a great time. Um, you know, it was filled with ups and downs of a career, but at the same time, it was it was a good time. It was a great learning experience. Um, you know, obviously was able to parlay that into things for the future. So all in all, it was a positive experience. I don't, you know, there's, everything has its good and bad. Uh, like I said, it's tough times and it's good times and you take it for what it is, but it was, in all, it was a great experience. Yeah. Well, um, you know, you came into the league, uh, battled injuries, um, just never, never could get past that. You know, it was tough at that point, but nowadays, you know, the advances and stuff, tailbacks are coming back, you know, any position player for that matter, at least ACLs or knee injuries and yeah. nine months like that. Man. Yeah, the injury that I had when I came out of Tennessee was a little bit, was at the time, was 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 a new injury, kind of from the standpoint of right. doctors hadn't seen it very often. Um, so for me to even get to the point to where I could even continue having a career whatsoever um, was pretty special, you know what I mean? But um you know, that's just, that's just the part, you know, that's just the way it goes sometimes. I mean, um, you play a violent game. This is a gladiator sport. So when you, when you get, you know, some injuries are bad when they happen, uh, they're unfortunate and sometimes they can derail a career, but um, you know, that's why you give it everything you got when you're out there you never take anything for granted. And when you get an opportunity, you make the best of it. Right. And as I said, Gerald, uh, you know, we'll focus college football, SEC and other sports as well, but you know, first episode being Tennessee guys uh, definitely want to dive in. You know, Coach Josh Hopple, new head coach up there, all the stuff we've been through the past decade. Um, you know, from, my, from my standpoint, obviously, it's uh, right now, it's, you know, some people say it's Georgia and then everybody else, but I say it's Georgia and it's still Alabama and everybody else. But with Coach Hopple's scheme, with the depth issues that we face this year, um, we're going to get to where we want to be, in my opinion, a lot faster than what we could with any other scheme. Tell me your thoughts on that. What do you think? I mean, I think that's kind of along the right lines of the way things will happen. It's just, you know, obviously depth is a factor. Um, every year in the SEC, you know, how it's tough to, to get through the season without a whole lot of injuries. Um, so, you know, it's 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 just a it's just a war of attrition, basically. And, you know, who's, who's there in the end? Obviously, you have the usual suspects right now with Georgia and Alabama. And, yes, it's pretty much them and everybody else. 
But I feel like if you look across the league and what teams are doing, what coaches are doing, obviously you look at what Hypo's doing with the with the speed of his offense and putting a lot of pressure on defensive and defensive coordinators to make the right call and be in the right place at the right time. Uh, it doesn't give you a lot of opportunities to really mess up. You know what I mean? It's from a standpoint of, well, I should say the other way around, it does. You know, a lot of times as a player, you want to put yourselves in positions where you don't have a lot to think about. You just go out there and play. But in with Hypo's system and the way that he's doing things, you know, he creates havoc right. for the defense in the sense that a lot of times they can't get their keys in fast enough, can't get substitutions in fast enough. So it creates problems. But I think you're seeing across the SEC, you're kind of seeing a little bit of a resurgence in – how it used to be when there wasn't so much of a wide gap between the top and, you know, probably say not necessarily the very bottom, but for three quarters of the way through the conference, you know, everybody's pretty much got the opportunity to go out and win on any given Saturday. You do anytime. I, I agree hundred uh, percent. You know, I think moving on from the Jeremy Pruitt era, what he inherited, you know, you hear these other people like, you know, and especially analysts talking about the depth, like, like we don't have, like we're trash roster right now. Like we got some players up there. We might not have many, but you know this is yeah. I mean, let's 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 not disrespect the guys that are there. I mean, yeah, we do absolutely. Have, we do have some good players on the roster. It's just not it's not to what Tennessee is used to having in past absolutely. years. And obviously, with the transfer port, the transfer portal and everything happening, you know, you lose what was it 25, 30 guys we lost this yeah. year. Uh, that's tough. You know, that's tough yeah. on anybody. I mean, you got to think about in a season where everything's going great. If you lose three or four, like you take 2005, right? Like my last my, my last year in school where we were number two team in the country, you lose four of your top six players and you go from being a team that everybody thinks is going undefeated to a, a team that's, you know, barely breaking 500. Yeah. Get that. So, yeah. you know, th those those little things matter throughout the course of the season. And, it, and it's just really a testament to what that staff is all about, what those players are all about for them to step up and have, you know, season that they've had this year so far. You know, um, I remember, uh, we, what was it, 17-10, first game of the year, Air Force, you, we won. But it was, um, I remember I was, I think, seventh grade. I was there, X4, and um, I just remember, I said, Dang, you know, maybe maybe it was just that day, but it ended up, you know, the five and six season. But, you know, uh, went in again on a Tuesday Yeah, night. well, I mean, <laughs> can't get into that on here, and I'm probably not a good conversation for uh, <laughs> yeah. for the public. But there's a lot of reasons why that, that year yeah. happened the way that it did, and you know, a lot of it had to do with stuff that had nothing to do with on the field. So um, that was a tough year for everybody. But like I said, you know, when you have everything even and you lose key players, it's tough, Absolutely. man. I don't yeah. care what level you're playing no. at. It's tough when you lose key players and Absolutely. when you lose a lumber of players, whether it's the graduation or transfer or whatever the case may be. Uh, uh, it's, it's, really comp it's really complicated to go out there and try to put a, a, a good product on the field. Absolutely. You know it's uh Tennessee I think they're moving in the right direction like you said um excited about you know uh from here on out in the future we will we'll record and review the week in college football most of the time on Sundays but I wanted to kind of get in here with you before the game we're recording on Saturday Tennessee has Kentucky tonight um you know I think we go up there tonight uh coming off the bye Tennessee or Kentucky's a physical football team they like to run the football so I think they're going to try to keep handing right. the boys off the field but I think that we I think we'll be fresh coming out of the bye. I think we'll uh, – Yeah, I think – Yeah, we're, we're going to be fresh coming out of the bye. And, you know, one of the promising things you got to look at when you're talking about Tennessee, Kentucky, obviously there's just – you know, I don't care what anybody says. Um, the series has gone the way it's gone for a reason. I don't care where – what teams rec what the team's records are. Um, no. There's just something about when certain teams match up the way that things go. Um, yeah. So that obviously gives Tennessee a lot of confidence going into the game and um, – you know, to, if you look at the stats and you look at what Kentucky's done, they're a good football team. They've got a good record, but, um, you know, I, I would think even their coaching staff would tell you they're a little sloppy at times. And I think Tennessee, with the way that we've been able to play over the, the you know, first part of the season, um, the fact that, yeah, we've made our mistakes, but for the most part, you know, we're a clean football team. Um, you know, I think, I think, I think that bodes well for us in, in, in this football game. And, um, you know, if Tennessee's able to make some plays and, uh, uh, and get kind of get the crowd out of it early. Um, you know, it could be pretty much business as usual. Yeah, <laughs> from take care of business, get in, get out. Let's go home, get ready for Georgia. So, now, right. moving on, you know, uh, short segment, we want to touch on Tennessee. Um, you know, good vibes. Go ahead, your pick. I'm assuming you're picking Tennessee. I'm going with Tennessee too, probably. I'm thinking, um, 
I'm going to go 35-21. Like Kentucky. Uh, yeah, Kentucky, at the end of the day, Kentucky will always surprise you when it comes to points. Yeah. So I'm always scared to shoot on the low end with them. So yeah. I'm going to go. I'm going to, uh, but I think, but I think with the rest, uh, and I think with the fact that we have a lot of game tape to go look back on, some really good game tape. Um, and when you listen to the guys talk about where they are mentally, uh, as well as they are physically, um, and everything that's going on, I think our <laughs> offense comes out and has a huge night. So I'm going to go 45, 28. I like it, man. I like it. Uh, moving on, uh, I want to touch a little bit of base, a little bit about your, um, what you got going on and what you do in the community with training guys and, uh, some of the names on your list, man, you got some good area prospects that you train and, uh, just tell us a little bit about that as well. Yeah, well, for, for several years now, ever since I left football uh, as a player, I've been training athletes and uh, help, and helping them get to where they want to get to and, and trying to help uh, at, at all levels, whether that's at the uh, youth level, uh, high school or college, or even, you know, beyond that, uh, working with guys and making sure that they're, uh, you know, guys and girls on top of their game, working with basketball, football, um, you know, as far as people that I've trained, I mean, I've trained a number of a number of uh, exceptional athletes. Um, I'm sure names that yeah, you uh, na names that names that come in right off the bat. Uh, Patrick Johnson, who just got drafted in the seventh yeah. round this year with the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. Um, Ryan Howard, obviously one of the best girl basketball players, women basketball players in the country, if not the best. Um, that's just to name a couple that people would probably yeah, know. Uh, Madison Hayes, who's at NC State. Yeah. Um, You've got, you know, other great players uh, uh, across uh, lots of different sports. Um, you know, God, I, I don't want to disrespect any of my people by not naming them, you know, obviously. But So I'll just kind of leave it there. But, you know, I've been blessed and fortunate to work with a lot of uh, 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 great people. Uh, uh, and, you know, they've been, and it's been really just an honor to be in the position Absolutely. that I've been in to really help to help people, you know, achieve their goals. And, um, and like I said, just to work with a bunch of uh, uh, exceptional young people. Absolutely, man. That's incredible stuff. Uh, I tell you one thing you can probably relate relate with me on. I'm 29. Um, and you know, as you, I, I see in your videos, you still train with your clients, and I coach basketball. And I, you know, I never ask our team to do anything that I wouldn't do. So obviously, we condition, we train. Uh, right. That time, you know, and uh, still dunk at 29. I still I still run daily, train. Okay. But uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you'd be the same in saying. Uh, you just recover a little slower when you get start. Yeah, that's all it is. That's yeah. all it is. You can yeah. still you can still do the same stuff. Still do it. You can still do it. Yeah. It's just, it's just gonna take you instead of instead of bouncing back. You know, after a game on Saturday, bouncing back. You know, literally Sunday night. It's probably, probably yeah. Tuesday or Wednesday before you feel better. Well, we gotta we gotta stay up because you know, like the picture you sent me last night, exchanging pictures with the boys. Uh, you know, we gotta yeah. we gotta be able to take care of them. You know, we can't let them beat us. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, I'm about to say can't let them uh, can't can't let them think they ever got the one up on dad. Never. Yeah. Oh no, no, no way. <laughs> but it's uh, you know I look forward uh, to working with you on some stuff. Um, got a big show planned next week for the Georgia weekend. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We're gonna reach out with Gerald here and try to get some details worked out. Maybe he can join us. We're gonna have hopefully a, a big cast. Yeah, of guys. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make that happen, man. Looking get forward set to up. Um, we've got some stuff lined up. We're gonna have. Uh, Probably, hopefully some food and some giveaways and stuff. And maybe get some, <laughs> well, I say, you never go wrong with food. Yeah, man. you know, get a crowd there and try to set up and get something going. But um, had a lot of positive feedback, and I look forward to helping you promote Beast University any way I can and vice versa. I hope you uh, invest in the Tucker Gang Sports Show as much as you want to. Oh, yeah, of course, man. Of course, man. Always appreciate yeah. it, man. And always love the uh, always love the hospitality, man. Chance to talk ball. Absolutely. I know you at your dad's birthday party. Uh, one last topic um what's it like you know you remember when you came out of high school going into college as a recruit and high school ball and stuff the last two years obviously Gerald we have dealt with uh you know the unknowns as far as with student athletes and what what we as coaches watch kids go through um you know what what was it like you know can you fathom how what kids are going through now as far as with COVID and everything and what they missed oh, out no I could I couldn't imagine being um you know, a recruit now, like if, they, if, 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 you know, the level that I was recruited at, you know, in today's, you know, recruiting uh, climate, there's no, I mean, I couldn't imagine, you know, with the NIL deals, with the, I mean. um, you know, obviously just with everything that goes on, you know, with the social media uh, presence and everything like that, because we didn't have none of that, you know, so, right. um, 
you know, man, it, it, I couldn't imagine, man. You, it's a whole nother monster, and you got to be prepared in a lot of different ways. So, um, in a lot of ways, man, I wish I was still uh, young enough to go out there and do it all over again. But then, when you look at some of the yeah. stuff some of these guys deal with, man, I'm like, nope. I'm so glad I didn't have to deal with none yeah. of that mess right there. I, was, I mean, uh, almost forgot to ask you too. I was trying to figure it out myself. But does NIL they got back pay like child support? <laughs> you know, they ought to go. They ought to go back. You know I was, what I mean? It, it's funny because some guys that uh, some guys that you know I still stay in contact with play. We were like, hey man, do they got nil deals for uh for old guys? Right, like, right we'll promote you know, it real quick. Cool, <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, I mean, I'm sure y'all can figure out a way to throw us a little something. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Uh, one last thing. Uh, happy birthday to three time Pro Bowler Gerald Riggs, senior tailback National Football League. Uh, Gerald, I won't take up any more of your time. This is episode one. Like I said, we got I look forward to working. Some big yeah, man, we got we got a lot to look forward to. I appreciate it. I'll definitely let him listen to that. I'm sure he'll appreciate absolutely, it. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Uh, let's get back to it. But uh, I appreciate you joining us, and we'll talk soon. Yeah, no problem, man. Have a good All one, right, brother. Peace.